Welcome to the first airing of the heart and soul in sports. Now, we this is our first episode, and basically what we do, we talk about all sports. That's all it is, all sports, all the time. And there's no biased opinion, we're going to tell it like it is. Um, but this first episode, uh, we're just going to get into a few things uh, called football. Um, first of all, Charles Henderson High School, we, we do high school football to Charles Henderson High School. Had a tough loss last night, lost 17 uh, to 9, I'm not, excuse me, 19 to 7 to Mary G. Montgomery. It was a tough game. Uh, we and then anybody who knows sports knew that was going to be a tough game. Uh, they had a cakewalk the week before when they beat Brundage like a dog, uh, 48 to 7 in Troy. Uh, but you know what? That's nothing new. We we don't learn to accept that. that. That's how it goes sometimes with with these high school games. But uh, we expect Brundage to bounce back tonight, uh, and we expect Charles Henderson High School to bounce back next week. Um, some breaking news I just found out. Alabama has actually just uh, announced who the starting quarterback going to be. No big surprise that it's uh, Jalen Milrow. Kind of suspected that he was the, um, been in the system the longest. And I would assume he's very familiar with the system. So that should be interesting nonetheless. Uh, we got a lot of people down in Alabama this year. And you know I'm a road tied guy. That's all we do. Roll on. We just win championships. Now we ain't won one in a couple of years, but it's, it's it's coming back. Um, I'm just glad he uh, announced it because normally Nick Saban will hold this until uh, kickoff, and then he'll finally announce who the starting quarterback gonna be. But uh, you know what? This this gonna be an interesting year because um, I heard the defense is ramped up. Uh, we got a we got a um, a slew of running backs. Uh, the receivers, uh, I'm not so sure about them, but um, the quarterback is what everybody's going to be looking at because that's the big topic. It's going to be hard to follow Bryce Young. Bryce Young, what the performance he put on when he was behind center, it's very very difficult to follow him. So we're going to have to just keep up with that. We're going to go over a little bit of football. Well, we're going to go a lot of football. We're going to go over a little bit of baseball, track, um, you name it, we probably going to go over it. Um, but one thing I want to bring some bring attention to, and it's something that's been really on my mind since uh, the ladies won the 4x100, uh, the, US, the USA ladies, um, Shakira, Richardson, um, Gabby Thompson. Look, we know Shakira Richardson was the anchor. She the one that gets all the credit. But let's just call it like we see it. The unsung hero was Gabby Thompson. Uh, Gabby Thompson. Because if you watch that race, Gabby was behind that the, 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 the Jamaican lady. Gabby closed that gap, took the lead, gave Richardson a comfortable lead, and Richardson didn't relinquish it. So we know Richardson got major speed. But let's not overlook Gabby Thompson and TT. All of them ran very, very hard, but Gabby Thompson is the unsung hero because she is the one who closed that gap. She was the third leg. She closed that gap because she was behind at first. She closed that gap, gave Richardson a nice, and Richardson, trust me, Richardson does not need a lot of space, but she gave her, she gave Richardson, Shakira Richardson, a nice, comfortable lead and she did not give it up and I want to take my hat off to the women and the men the men Noah be quiet you won you were the anchor the US dominated there's no need to try to throw shade at the NBA that I don't understand what what was you trying to accomplish by that that was kind of stupid it was foolishness. You enjoyed, you and you just won. Once again, you swept, you won three medals, three gold medals. Why did you have to do that? Why did you have to put all the attention on you instead of your team? Because that's all they talking about now is your comment. It was an unnecessary comment. The NBA has nothing to do 
with what you accomplished on the field. Why did you have to come out there and say, well, why did they call the NBA world champions? They the world of USA. Man, know your, know your basketball. USA, when they play in the Olympics, they play France, they play Europe. They, man, just know something before you go running your mouth and looking stupid up there on the podium. Enjoy your victory. Enjoy your win. Your comments were not necessary. They were ill-advised, dumb, and pure ignorant. That's all they were. You took all the you took all the credit. You took all the the light that they had on the USA teams, and you put it on yourself. What was you trying to accomplish? Beats me. It was stupid, though. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna tell you like it is. It was stupid, and you could have kept your mouth shut and that and 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 and, and enjoyed the fruits of the labor that you put in. But instead of doing that, you had to try to bring some shade to the NBA. If you got a problem with the NBA, just say it. Just don't don't bring stupid stuff up like that because that that made zero sense. Um, I'm I'm I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna get on college football. We're gonna got, we got a lot of NFL games coming on this week, and I'm gonna give you my predictions. I'm gonna give you who I think gonna win. Um, but right now I want to go to basketball real quick. I'm gonna. Lakers, you know, Lakers, Lakers ride. That's that's who I am. I'm riding with the Lakers. Um, actually, I'm just riding with LeBron. I'm not really care about the Lakers. I'm just be not serious. But this is my thing with the Lakers. Why did you give Anthony Davis uh, an extension? I, I really don't understand. Why would you give a person who can't stay healthy an extension? Um, nobody's talking about it. Not for real. I just don't understand that. He can't stay healthy. If you got 82 games, he's only going to play 38 to 40. So why would you pay him? Why would you reward him for not being there? I just wouldn't have gave him the extension. I see no reason. There's no feasible reason to give him an extension. I just do not understand that. And that... Jenny, Jenny Bus, nobody was breaking down the door to get him. I can promise you nobody was knocking down the door to get him. He's injury prone. He's not reliable. He's strength faster than a sock in a drive. There's nothing that he's shown you where he deserves a contract extension. But for some reason, y'all decided it was a good business move. He's not bringing anybody to the stadium. I'm, I'm just going to, I mean, he's not going to do it. I'm, 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 well, excuse me, the arena. He's not going to bring anybody there. LeBron is the one who brings people to the arena. The man is almost 40-something. And he's still averaging more points than the one you just gave the contract extension to. He's more durable. Now, he's breaking down now because of age. And, uh, you ain't going to beat Father Time. I don't care who you is. I don't care how great you think you are. You're not going to beat Father Time. Um, I just don't understand that. I just had to get that out of this event. I just had to get that off my chest. All right, let's go over a few games. The the Navy and Notre Dame game, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on that because I'm just not. Um, the one thing I don't understand about the college football is how does Notre Dame keep getting ranked in the top 15? Um, no matter how bad they lose in the playoffs, no matter how many times they lose, do they have some kind of infatuation with Notre Dame that they just got to put Notre Dame in the top 15? They're not going to live up to the hype, people. Uh, if you're a Notre Dame fan, I know you're going you to dislike this. Notre Dame is not going to live up to the hype. They haven't recovered from the Alabama debacle when they got blowed out the stadium. Um, they're just not going to live up to the hype. So um, that, that's all I'm going to say on that. Um, the Florida-Utah game was kind of interesting to me. I thought Florida would put up a better fight than that. I, I really, truly thought Florida could do better than what they did. Uh, evidently, I was wrong. Um, now, uh, true enough, they were playing away. But uh, Utah shouldn't have been that much better than they were. Um, I, I, I looked at the, the numbers on it. Um, I, I just don't understand... Um, the quarterback Florida had, well, he was 31 of 44 um, for 333 yards, something like that. 
One touchdown, one interception. Um, he had a quarterback rating of 30.4. Um, honestly, that's not going to get it done. Uh, not when you got um, – uh, now, this is strange. The quarterback from Utah was 12 of 18 uh, for 159 yards, one touchdown, no interceptions. Had a quarterback rating of 76.3. So it ain't always about the amount of yards you put up. It's about when them yards come and how important those yards. Them 333 evidently didn't amount to anything because you got beat by 13 points. And you had a low quarterback rating, a high passing. You had more passing yards, lower quarterback rating. Quarterback from Utah, Bryson, I mean, excuse me, Bryson had a lower passing yard, lower passing yard, but he had a higher quarterback rating. Amen. Uh, you just can't do that. Uh, I think the game was lost and won, won and lost on defense. You want to know the truth about it to me because the offense really didn't do anything. If you look at Florida rushing yards, which as a team, Florida ran, Florida ran the ball for 13 yards. That's unacceptable for an SEC team. Come on, guys. That's unacceptable for an SEC team. Then you let the Utah total rushing yards for 105. That is a recipe for disaster, and that's a recipe for an ass whooping. And that's exactly what you got. We, you got to do better than that. There's no reason. You know what? No, this is probably the best flaw they can do. I don't know what I was thinking about. <laughs> Just to be honest, this is about the best flaw they can do. Um, but um, let's, let's, let's move on to some games that's, that, that really is going to matter. Um, why does Michigan keep getting ranked in, in as high as they is? Well, Michigan is ranked number two this year. All right. Um, they play East East Carolina at home. They at home, so they got that. They got that. Uh, Michigan is, is uh, a fifty one point five favorite. Uh, it's probably true. Yeah, I don't. I don't see East, Mich East East Carolina putting up that big of a fight. I'm just gonna be honest with you. So uh, we'll go ahead and say I'm gonna go ahead and say Michigan gonna win that. All right, you got Virginia and number twelve Tennessee. Tennessee at home. Um, they got Tennessee by twenty seven point five points. I got Tennessee winning. Now, I ain't gonna say they're gonna win by no 27 points. But it should be a dominating win where they shouldn't be sweating. At the halftime, I expect them to have another quarterback in. Now we go on to prime time. Deion Sanders, all the hype around Colorado. But you playing TCU, which is an extremely winnable game based on the last game I seen that TCU played. And I'm gonna say this, I don't care what nobody say. TCU had no business being in that in, 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 in the championship against anybody. Well, no, it was a scrimmage to Georgia. It wasn't a game, it was a scrimmage. TCU had no business being there. Now they can tell me where they earned it then. They earned their ass whooping too. They earned that too. And they got it. So the committee just keep making mistake after mistake after mistake. And they don't, and it doesn't seem like they learn from their mistakes either. Um we're not going to pay a lot of attention to that. But I expect prime time to have the Colorado Buffaloes ready to go. Now, I ain't going to say they can beat TCU. They are very capable of beating TCU. They should beat TCU. Well, we don't know. We, we don't, everybody going to have their eyes on that Colorado TCU game. Uh, Colorado, I mean, TCU is ranked number 17, which is too high for them. To me, they shouldn't even be ranked in the top 25. Um, even though they got TCU by 20 point, but they got them 20 point favorites, 20.5 point favorites. I'm, I'm not seeing that. I'm just going to be honest with you. Uh, they should win, but Deion Sanders has a way to get his team up for the game, so I want, I'm just curious to see how that's going to work out. Uh, we're not going to spend a lot of time on Arkansas State and Oklahoma. We I kind of expect Oklahoma to win that game. Um, they got Oklahoma by 36 point. Well, 36 point uh, favorites. They at home in front of their home crowd, season opener. I expect them to meet that. Um, I expect them to meet that, that, that point differential. Um, Utah State, Iowa, Iowa ranked number 25. Iowa's always ranked, but they never do anything. So I'm not. I don't see Utah State doing anything either. I will win. I don't, it, it should be a convincing win. But uh, we'll, we'll find out. Ole Miss number 22 versus Mercer. 
should be a comfortable win by Ole Miss standards. Um, they got old. You know what? When they don't even have you favored by anything, and you ranked, that's uh, that's kind of interesting there for me. Because I expect Ole Miss to beat Mercer by at least twenty-eight to thirty points. They don't have them. They don't have any. Um, they ain't got them favored by anything. Portland State and Oregon. When well, Oregon is ranked number fifteen, kind of got Oregon beat Portland State pretty handily. I think this game should be over at halftime. It, it, it shouldn't be that much to discuss. But you know, next when we come back on our next episode, we're gonna discuss all these losses and wins, and we're gonna see how many I got right. And um. It should be. This, the first week is always the easiest week because most of the teams get the cupcake. Uh, SEC, SEC teams get the cupcake game. game so uh, we're going to see how that works out. Ohio State and Indiana should be a game. Ohio State should blow them out. If they got Ohio State favored by 30 points, so I think Ohio State would uh, meet that. Um, Boise State and Washington is interesting. Boise State ain't been relevant in a long time. So, uh, I'm going to go with Washington on this one. Just to, just to be honest, I'm going to go with Washington. I don't have a lot. I just like Oregon. I mean, I like uh, Boise State. Feel I like the blue. Uh, that's the only thing I like about it. But I don't really see them doing anything. Uh, the team that we got to play on our schedule, Texas is at home um, facing Rice. Uh, they got... Um, I expect Texas to handle them pretty easily. Just again, it shouldn't be that much of a game. Second quarter, going into the third quarter, uh, I don't really think it's going to be competitive at all with Texas. Uh, Texas should run away with that one. Uh, Tennessee State and Notre Dame. Once again, I, I just don't see how Notre Dame keep getting in this top thing. So, but I'm gonna pick Notre Dame because you know you playing. Tennessee State, I just don't see and this Tennessee State got some prizes, some surprises in their back pocket over there. I don't think there's gonna be much of a game. Uh, where well, you got number 19 with uh, Wisconsin going against Buffalo. Um, you, you playing in Wisconsin. Uh, like I say, season opener, home crowd. I got Wisconsin in that one. The national championship, the national champions in college football, the Georgia Ball, Georgia Bulldogs playing UT Martin. Just the best game y'all can get for them, huh? No other team that would play them, but but it's Georgia's number. So we're not gonna even comment off that game. That game's gonna be Georgia gonna blow them out. That shouldn't be in plus Georgia at home, so that should be an easy game. Uh, we got Nevada at USC. USC at home. Uh, USC is ranked number six. I don't. I have no clue how they got ranked that high. I don't know what the committee, um, the the, a, the uh, AP poll. Whoever's going to vote, I have no idea what they're looking at. But for some reason, they in love with USC and Notre Dame. Those are two teams they keep ranked pretty high for some reason, and I have no clue why. Uh, Kansas State, number 16, is taking on Southeast Missouri State. Uh, well, we got Kansas State in that one. That shouldn't be no big deal. Texas A&M against New Mexico. Texas A&M at home. They rank number 23. I'm going, I'm going with the SEC every time, so... It's, it's, we're not going to take a lot of it. Now, Middle Tennessee, Middle Tennessee at Alabama. You know, roll tide, baby. That's that's how we do it. That's roll tide. But it shouldn't be a game. We should see two other quarterbacks in this game. If Alabama's defense is good as everybody's saying it is, and that offensive line is as good as we think it should be, to me, when you don't have a great quarterback, then you, you rely on the offensive line and you rely on your running game. You let your running game open the passing game up. You let them run, get some running, you get some running lanes, and all of a sudden you get them uh, linebackers creeping up to stop the run. They put seven in the box, eight in the box. Now you got one-on-one -on -one coverage in the back. The tight ends got to beat, your tight ends got to win those one-on-one -on -one matchup. Your receivers got to win your one-on-one -on -one matchup. I don't know a lot about their receivers this year. We'll find out a little bit before, a little bit later on when the season get going. We'll find out exactly about them. But uh, you know, I got Alabama. I'm not gonna go against the tide on this. Uh, West Virginia, Penn State, Penn State. Not a lot to do that. Uh, North Carolina is ranked number 21, going against South Carolina. That is a trap game. North Carolina has been better not sleep on South Carolina. 
because South Carolina is still an SEC team. And they will surprise you and they will come out and shock you if you ain't careful. So you want you want to be careful about that game because I really think South Carolina can win that. And actually, not only do I think it, I'm going to pick South Carolina to win. And even though they got a North Carolina 2.5-point uh, favorite, but I like South Carolina at home. And I know well, from North Carolina to South Carolina, it's not that big of a gap, so the distance ain't that big. But I just like... I like the SEC team being underdogs because they seem to rise up to the occasion. South Alabama, South Alabama Tulane, I got Tulane, it is not going to be nothing good. Oregon State at San Jose State. Oh, uh, now, the primetime game I keep hearing about LSU at Florida State. That's a tough one, but I'm going to go with LSU. I, you know what? I can't go against an SEC team when they're playing an ACC team. So I'm going to go with uh, I'm gonna go with LSU. But LSU better not go down there playing around, and LSU better not go down there thinking that they, they, Florida State going to just lay down. I just don't think Florida State offense is good enough to go against LSU defense to provide any real true competition for them. So that's the only thing that, that bothers me with that. Clemson has never been, Clemson ain't been relevant in two or three years. How did they get in the rank number nine? They're playing Duke, which is another ACC team. But I just don't see Clemson. Clemson just has fell off. Um, after Sunshine left, they ain't really been the same team. And I know they lost a lot on offense. I know they lost a pretty good bit on defense. Um, but... Um, they got to get it together because uh, Clemson is going to Duke, which is the game's playing in Durant, North Carolina. Uh, I don't see Duke winning this. I actually see Clemson winning. So it, uh, it should be very interesting. It should be very interesting. I just look at it like, um, I just don't I just don't see Duke having them. Duke come very close. It's just like Duke and North Carolina State. They come very close to beating Clemson. But it's something, some fluke situation is going to occur and Clemson going to squeak it out. They do it every time. That's the puzzling part of it. I just never figured out. And we know the NFL kicks off on uh, September the 7th. Uh, we'll get into the NFL a little bit later on. Uh, we just want to stay into this uh, college right now because that's what's going on at the present moment. Uh, but... but um, NFL should be some smoke this year. I really don't like Kansas City. I think Patrick Mahomes is overrated. Nah, that's just me. That's, that's just me talking. I just don't think he's as good as everybody think he is. I think he's more Brett Farvish, that he do some plays that his receivers make great catches on. And I think that's just summed it up in a nutshell. Uh, but sooner or later, those Brett Favre plays catches up with you. And you eventually it backfired on you. So we're gonna see how that works. But the Lions and the Chiefs, that's that's a, I think that's a Thursday night game. Um on September the seventh. I will be watching that. That should be very interesting. Um I think the Lions are gonna lose. Um but it's it's just to the point where I just I just don't have enough faith in Detroit. They just never put a team together around anybody. They get a quarterback, and, and then they get one receiver. They get a, a or they got a, a running back, no quarterback. It seems like they can't get two or three things to match together at one time. Because their defense, after the Dominican Sue left, their defense just kind of fell through the roof. There's just nothing about their defense that scares anybody. Uh, their receivers, after Megatron left, that's not, that, don't, that don't scare anybody. So it, 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 we'll get into a little bit more than that in our next show. Um, I have some interesting guests on then, and we will be talking about sports. Uh, they're very, they're sports fanatics, so we will have them on, and it should be hilarious. Um, to then, I got a few people who probably gonna call in and give me pure hell on some of the stuff I done said, but I tell them like I tell all of them, like they look, like LeBron say, bring it on, I'm ready for all that smoke. Um, but I, that's something I wanted to get into is Major League Baseball. I like. Um, that's a guy that done, done start coming up, uh, or uh, I just started paying attention to him. Um, and um, 
think they played Cincinnati last night. Uh, but the Chicago Cubs or something? Uh, yeah, I think the Chicago Cubs played uh, Cincinnati last night. Um, let me let me make sure. I think they beat them six to two. Uh, if I'm not if I'm not mistaken. Um, but the thing is, there's a there's a guy that um, did a hell of a job. Yeah, it was the Chicago Cubs and the, uh, the Cincinnati Reds. He did say uh, the Cincinnati. I mean, Chicago Cubs won six two. Um, he's coming up. He's coming up on. He's coming in his own. And I'm I'm interesting how far this this guy can go. I'm holding his name back because I'm keeping everybody in suspense for the time being. Because I I know everybody thinking I'm finna say this one guy name, but I'm gonna say something totally different. But um. I like that, and even like tonight we got the Cubs again. Uh, they playing the Reds. The Cubs are yeah, it's one run to zero right now. So this should be this should be an interesting game, nonetheless. But all y'all baseball fans out there, I just look at it like you know, timing is everything with baseball. And I just never understood how them guys throw that ball that much and I know they have relief pitches, I know they have the, the bullpen, but the starting pitcher, boy, you gotta just imagine, he, he, he's getting uh, toe up because he's throwing, I don't know how many pitches consistently, but a guy that surprised me on the Cubs that last night uh, accounted for three runs and a solo home run is uh, Cody Bellinger. I'm gonna keep my eye on him. Because if he can continue this, there's no way he can't make the All-Star team. There is no way he can't do it. Um, I think Bollinger plays center field. Um, his average is 317, 21 home runs, 80 runs batted in. Uh, and he's 28 years old, so I think he got a good career with the Cubs. But last night he showed you what his potential are, potential was, you know, as, or as he's been progressing to come up to, to, to reach these plateaus. Or I just ain't paid no attention to him. Give him a little bit of both. But if um, if he plays like he plays last, if he, if he plays most of this season, the rest of the season like he played last night, oh man. I don't I don't see why you can't you can't you can't win with this guy. This guy, um, he he was a knockout. And when I looked when I looked at it, and I looked at his numbers, and I looked at his percentages, and I looked at his outcome, Bellinger was one of the hottest hitters. He's one of the hottest hitters in baseball. He's getting he don't have that flashy name that you would think of, but his solo home run. Is what gave the Cubs the lead, but he's also valuable because um, he 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 hit three runs in. Uh, he helped. He got three runs in. So that if 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 you in your fantasy league, keep your eye on Cody Bellinger. Now that's the one I would keep my eye on because this dude can he he can flat out hit and like I say, if he plays. Rest of the season, like he played last night, man, oh man! And right now, the Cubs up one zero on Cincinnati Reds, and Cincinnati's at home, so we're gonna keep my we're gonna keep our eye on that one just to make just to see what else is going. But you know what? Let's just talk. Let's just talk some sports now. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna get on Alabama. I'm an Alabama fan. I've been an Alabama fan for I don't know how long, but I am an SEC fan also. So whoever the SEC is playing. Um, out of out of conference, I'm going. For, I'm going for the SEC. I always go for the SEC. Um, the SEC, in my opinion, is the best conference in college football. The championship they got more championships in the SEC than any other conference, and Alabama accounts for almost 18 of them. So you know that's that's good. Georgia up and coming. They done won two um, under um, our old defensive coach. Um, so, 
I can't take nothing from him. Uh, he's building the team in Georgia like he should build it. Uh, but it's a SEC power team. You know the funny thing about Georgia? Georgia ain't never been uh, one of those teams that bully you. But under, um, I don't call his name because I don't want to give him any credit, even though he probably earns it. Uh, under the coach, our uh, ex-defensive coach, uh, he has turned that team into uh, basically a uh, defensive-minded team. And he's got a few quarterbacks uh, under his belt that really stood up when they had to stand up. And, and I can't take nothing from them. Um, our team has come, Alabama has come, become more finesse, uh, more passing. They got away from the run. Uh, the defense really hasn't been what they would call a shutdown defense. Uh, we don't get a decent pass rush. We didn't have no uh, uh, ends that was good pass rushes. We don't get a lot of push in the middle. And that's why a lot of teams can run on them. Now, I'm hoping that changes. I'm hoping we get back to the round and pound is what they say, or ground and pound is what they say. And I'm really thinking that if Alabama can just control the, uh, the time of possession, run the ball with any kind of consistency, and throw to keep the defense honest, but don't rely on the pass, rely on the run first. Let's, let's rely on the run to set up the pass. And hopefully our defense is better and more improved than it was last year, and we don't give up fourth and twenties like we are so famous on doing. And I think if we can do that, we need to play, and I'm gonna go ahead and say his name, like Kirby Smart uh, plays on the back. But Kirby Smart, def uh, the defense he got built up in Georgia, um, which doesn't surprise me because he's a defensive-minded coach. Um, so we need to get more athletic up front. Uh, we need to get um, a better push up front, but we we keep we keep getting knocked off the line like two or three yards, and uh, by the time the linebacker scrape over, uh, the the running back is five yards past them. Then, see, we need to do like we we had them guys like Upshaw, Hightower. You penetrate, you push that line back. If it's fourth and one, you don't you don't you don't put a doubt in their mind that they they gonna punt. You know they gonna punt because they realize we can't move them guys up there. But la the last couple of years. They've been going on fourth and three, fourth and five on their side of the field because they don't respect the defense. We got to bring that defense, that defensive-minded uh, mentality. We got to bring that back. We got to let them know that, hey, when you got fourth and four, don't even think about it. Punt. If it's fourth and one, you don't even think about it. Punt. But see, until we get that viciousness back, that ferociousness back on that line, Teams always going to try to run on us. That's the MO. They say they feel like they do it. The last year in LSU, we had them pinned down multiple times in the red zone. Guess what they did on fourth down? They felt like our defense wasn't a threat. So they went for it on fourth down. We got to change that. We got to get that defense back where it's nasty. That when you when your running backs come in there, they tiptoeing. They looking like, okay, where the linebacker at? What are we going to get? We don't want to do that. You want them to go on the outside so we can... We can make them run sideways. You ain't going nowhere if you run sideways. That's the defense that I want, that I that I remember. Back in 2000, 2018, when they won that championship, that was a vicious defense they had. We need to get back to that, 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 that ferociousness. We gotta get back where you like, oh man, no, I ain't wanna mess with them guys. Them guys ain't no joke over there. Until we do that, we need some cornerbacks who can guard. But y'all cornerbacks on Alabama, please do one thing for me. When the ball is in there, would y'all please turn around and look for it? If y'all look for the ball, y'all get so many interceptions. You got balls can hit you in the back of the helmet because you ain't looking back. You worrying about the cornerback. Pay attention to the cornerback guys. The cornerback guys get big, guess what? Turn around and look for the ball because you know it's coming. Quit getting beat on double move. If it's fourth and 20, why are you playing them up um, a press coverage and then biting off a five-yard route? But five yards ain't going to do him any good. Let him catch it. Tackle him. Don't bite off the obvious stuff. Cornerbacks also. Quit worrying about what's going on in the backfield. Worry about your man. You got your eyes in the backfield. The receiver done went behind you. That's an easy touchdown. Easy 15, 20 yard pass. We got beat like that so many times last year. Um, the Tennessee game. I'm going to say it. Tennessee, the referees cheated. They couldn't have cheated no worse. They cheated on everything they possibly could cheat on. I just don't I just don't understand it. One flag that they threw, nobody knows who threw it. So, you know, 
it is what it is. But um, we got to do better on defense, and we got to lock down these cornerbacks. I mean, these receivers. And we need uh, we need that front line. Quit getting pushed around. You do the pushing. You push them back into the quarterback. That's how you get sacked. That's how you get. You want penetration. You get penetration. You will throw the quarterback off his off his game. But as long as we got the quarterback sitting back there in a rocking chair when he dusting the ball off, looking around, playing with it, you give him seven seconds, he's gonna find some. A cornerback ain't gonna guard that long. So let's get a decent pass rush. Let's get a decent edge rush, and let's go and get these guys. Don't wait for them to bring the fight to you. You bring the fight to them, and that's how we was winning games back then. We we relied on the running game and defense. Lately, we've been we didn't like I said, they ain't got finesse. They done started not relying on the passing passing game and a little defense. You can't outscore everybody. So what you do is the old school way. We score twenty one, we keep you under twenty one. That's how you win championships. Defense. They say defense win championship. That's how the excuse me. That's how it's done. So that's a lot of games. I'm very interested. It's going to be very interesting tomorrow and Sunday. Uh, to the LSU and Florida State games on Sunday, uh, prime time. I don't have no clue why they got that on prime time, but it's on prime time. Um, so that should be uh, an interesting game. Uh, LSU is at, uh, on the road, so let's see how they let's see how they travel. Um, so you know, we we got a lot of sports we get into the NFL. Um, I just don't think Kansas City is going to repeat, in my opinion. Um, I don't think the Jets are going to do as much as they think they're going to do just because they got Aaron Rodgers. Um, because I still think the, the team that Aaron Rodgers had is better than the team that the Jets got now. Now, the only good thing about Aaron Rodgers and what he went through the Jets, you in a, a division that you could probably win because New England has been on the downside. Buffalo is suspect. They play halfway decent sometimes, but then they're going to give up the ghost. And uh, the um, uh, it, what is uh, it's the Jets. New England, and uh, where's in the uh, AFC? They in the AFC East. It's the Jets, New England, Buffalo, and for some reason I never can think of that fourth team that's in the AFC, uh, the AFC East. Um, it, it'll come to me later on. It just ain't gonna come to me right now. But the thing about uh, the AFC East is it's up for debate because the Dolphins, the Dolphins, the Dolphins always have a chance, but somehow they blow it at the end. So I got, I actually got Buffalo winning the AFC East again, and they probably will. Um, now the, the, the division that's going to be interesting to me, and I think the most competitive division in the AFC is the AFC North with uh, Baltimore's coming up. Cincinnati Bengals has been in there for a while. Cleveland is not the pushover and the laughable team they used to be. And Pittsburgh seemed to have found a quarterback. So that should be an interesting, um, very interesting um, sit, uh, division to play in. Uh, I couldn't even begin to tell you who I think going to win the AFC North. It's wide open. AFC South with Houston Texans, Indianapolis Colts, Jacksonville Jaguars, Tennessee Titans. Um, that's the opposite of AFC North. This one I have no clue who's gonna win. Jacksonville, I got no, I got no, I got no faith in the quarterback in Jacksonville. Tennessee, I definitely don't have no faith in the quarterback. You got Derrick Henry as a running back, but you don't give him anything to work with. So you just wasting his years with a quarterback that's Miami got rid of. And you gave him a contract, and you gave him more money to stay. What did Ryan Tannehill show you that made you want to sign him to a bigger, another deal? Sometimes I, I don't see what these coaches be seeing. But the AFC West, you got Denver, Kansas City, Raiders, and the Chargers. We, Kansas City probably going to win that. Uh, the Raiders are the Raiders. I don't care if you move them from Nevada. The LA, they still the Raiders. They're not gonna change. Chargers, um, they quarterback has looked like he took a step forward a couple years ago, but then he took a step back again. So I have no um, no faith in him. Denver, I don't think nobody knows what they're gonna do. Denver just all over the place, so it's up in the air with them. 
NFC East. All y'all Cowboy fans. Every year y'all gonna win the championship. Every year y'all go home. Dallas Cowboys, the Giants, Eagles, and the Commanders. And the Commanders. Uh, the, that's, that, that division is the Eagles to win. But it's also the Eagles to lose because the other three teams shouldn't even be in it. They, they hype Dallas up every year. They always say Dak, Dak Prescott's going to take the next step. Uh, I think Dak has took all the steps he can take. They done put weapons around him. They done changed running backs left and right. They sent Ezekiel to uh, New England. So you got the, which he, the, I, I don't I understand that because he really didn't perform as, as well as he should have. Uh, and the second stream, the second uh, running back behind him, well, the running back behind him outperformed him. So I understand that. But the Cowboys are not going anywhere. I don't know why y'all Cowboy fans keep fooling yourself, thinking every year y'all going to the Super Bowl. You know what they always told me? If you keep saying it's going to rain, eventually it will. It might be 20 years from now, but it will rain. Every year y'all get these high expectations. You know you're not going to meet them. You know there's no way to meet them, but you keep thinking you're going to win it. The Eagles are going to win the, uh, the NFC East. The Cowboys will be lucky to even get in the playoffs. And if they get in the playoffs, they're going to get eliminated the first round. That's normally how it is. I'm sorry. This is how it will. And I say North, the Chicago Bears, Detroit Lions, Green Bay Packers, Minnesota Vikings. The sad part about that division is the Chicago Bears might be the only team with a stable quarterback. Um, I'm the, I, I don't see anything out of Detroit. I'm not going to even factor them in. Uh, Green Bay... Uh, I really don't have nothing. I don't, I don't know what they got going on. And the Vikings, I never know what they got going on. So it's up in the air with them. They had the NFC South, the Atlanta Falcons, Carolina Panthers, New Orleans Saints, Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Put them in a bucket, shake them up, and pick one. It, it really does not matter which one you pick. They might win the division. They're not going anywhere. This is the, to me, this has got to be the most horrible division in NFL, not just the NFC, NFL period, because none of them teams pose a threat to anybody that I've seen. So I don't have a clue who going to win this division. Uh, New Orleans is it might be the only one I can gain because Carolina ain't going to do anything. Atlanta hasn't done anything for uh, I don't know how long. And Tampa Bay, once that Tom Brady project was over with, they see that uh, that team has been in the toilet ever since. NFC West, Arizona, the Rams, 49ers, Seattle. The only reason I'm gonna pick the 49ers, they got one, they probably got the best defense in that division. Uh, it's not a quarterback driven division, but Seattle might have the most experienced quarterback. That ain't saying a whole lot, but that's that's all that's all I got. But beyond that, uh, I would probably pick the 49ers to win because I like their defense. Um they just need a quarterback, a couple of better receivers. Because they got the defense in line. See, the problem is about this, you can't keep, sooner or later the defense is going to falter. So you got to take advantage of this while you got while you got that defense up there. So we we just going to have to wait and see. But like I say, September the 7th is Monday Night Football. I mean, excuse me, Thursday Night Football, Detroit and Kansas City. Uh, that's where the rubber meets the road, and that's when we're going to find out who can do what? And um, off that, we're going to close. Hey, we enjoyed it. it it's been a blast. Uh, sports has always been my passion. I love sports. I love all sports. I'm not a golf fan, though, so I don't, I don't do golf. But I will talk about it if it's necessary. <laughs> but, hey, we'll be back next week. We're going to update. We're going to find out who was, if I was right or wrong. Um... But the college games, keep your eye on the Alabama quarterback. Keep your eye on Jalen Monroe, Alabama. And I want mean, everybody pay attention to their defense and see if they run the ball like they started uh, years ago. Rely on the run to set up the pass and have a vaunted defense. And see if they do that. And if they do that, they'll be all right this year. But until next week, until next week see you later for the first episode of the Heart and Soul in Sport. And if you ain't got heart and soul, you ain't in sport, baby. Peace. See you next week.